Obi Trice the third. On November 14th, 1977. Growing up in the 90s, early 2000s, when I was finally able to buy my own albums, it was a very selective decision. As I wandered for hours it seemed, looking at all the artwork so neatly covered in plastic, felt the weight of the packaging and shook it just a little to see if the artist gave anything extra to his fans. Also weirdly, because feeling that weight also let me know time was taken on its case booklet insert that I value, seeing as it's what I'd study while listening to the hour long plus project. Nothing was like that feeling. Then on the way home, gently peeling off the album, trying not to scratch its casing, Grabbing your trusted boombox with the disc slot conveniently on top, resting your new disc in, headphones strapped, and being taken away into a world of an artist you've never met and learning his life as a fly on the wall for at least 60 plus minutes of attention. Those Saturdays were the best. As time went by, I still remember the few names I called my favorite artists growing up, like the girls I've seriously dated, and like those, my favorite rap artists were the same, few and carefully selected. DMX, Tupac, then Jay-Z, Nelly, Eminem, Nas, all had a moment where to me there were none greater. A name you'd probably squint your eyes at when I tell you was included is Obi Trice, Young Makai Pfeiffer. What's up, nigga? You feeling me, man? I'm about to be on some real murder shit, eh? Owes me money? It's fucking dead. I bought Obi's Chairs album the day it came out, and it became the soundtrack to my life the rest of the year. Don't Come Down was a song I had on repeat, along with the G-Unit Shady Cut, We All Die One Day. That album went platinum and I thought Obi was next up. He had the voice, the bars, personality, backed by some of the biggest rappers and producers in the game and in the right era. To me, he was the black, more street version of Eminem who couldn't miss in my book at the time. Who would have thought just five years later, the platinum selling artist would be asking to part ways with Eminem and his label Shady Records. He was supposed to become a household name and superstar, yet he isn't even remembered as one of the best of the 2000s. Here's why. Three reasons Obi Trice's growth was stunted. It's your boy JC Stunted Growth. Ash, get it, man. See who you, Obi's dead in your pupil. Shady, not because the label made me. Life played me, so my outlook's crazy. Stunt number one, timing. Obi Trice is a Detroit artist that got his name from the late hip hop artist and his good friend Proof before he died in 2006. Known as Obi One at the time, Proof, when introducing him, decided to call him by his government name and the rest was history. He was introduced to Eminem soon after by Bizarre of D12 and the two Detroit MCs immediately hit it off. He was signed to Eminem's label Shady Records in 2000 and began working on his debut album while adding pieces here and there to Eminem's projects as well as the classic 8 Mile movie and soundtrack. It would take three years before his debut came out and it couldn't have come out in a worse time in hindsight. On one hand, it was a gift for Trice, seeing as that was arguably the hottest span for Shady Records, having released Eminem's classic The Eminem Show in 2002, and still dropping singles for the album that sold 27 million copies worldwide to date. He also released what some would say his best overall album, Encore, in 2004 that also went diamond, which sandwiched Obi Trice in between being released in late 2003. Also released that year was the most hyped debut album of my generation, 50 Cent's Get Rich or Die Trying, released in February the same year. 50 Cent had a chokehold on the game like never before seen and the light was on him. He also had a host of his own artists waiting in line that would all go platinum and dominate the airwaves for the foreseeable future. 50 really did it to me man, 50 came and just 
If it, if if there was no 50 Cent, my shit would have been out of here. Obi Trice became an afterthought, and it's amazing his album even did as well as it did in sales, selling over a million copies in the U.S. and two million worldwide. To me, that album is a classic hip hop album, much like Obi Trice's style itself. He has that classic hip hop voice, introspective rhymes that you could feel were extensions of his actual life, while being entertaining and charismatic. Obi had that persona that I think could have also been a star on the big screen. He was a street guy, but effortlessly funny at the same time. Another hurdle of bad timing came because of him being abruptly shelved and neglected by Shady Records as Eminem began his hiatus from music after 2004, allegedly to deal with his drug issues and mental health. With Eminem gone and the label basically doing nothing, the platinum selling Obi Trice's potential died along with everyone else's buzz on the label not having Eminem's presence around. He didn't release his second album until 2006, three years later, while M was away from the scene and by that time, fans began to ignore anything coming from Shady, including Obi Trice. Second Rounds On Me, to me, was his best work and one of the best albums of the 2000s. The white boy stepped down, so I accept the crown. In hindsight, that line, I'm sure he didn't know at the time, would be an ingredient to his first growth stunt. I wanted to put my records out quicker than they was re getting released. Like Second Rounds On Me should have came out right after Cheers. You know, we was working, I was working. Stunt number two, Shady Departure. Obi Trice's second album, Second Rounds On Me, in my opinion, was the best of 2006. Unskippable body of work and Obi's second classic in my book. But because of stunt number one, the album wasn't promoted as such and led to Obi requesting his release from the label. He was in the prime of his career and I'd go as far as putting songs like Cry Now and Lay Down against any rap song of that era rap song, not pop or radio single. Had that album been pushed to the masses and had the rollout like his first album did, Obi could have ascended to stardom. But like mentioned, Eminem had retired and the buzz behind his artist was left dangling in the air. Obi had no choice but to leave and it wasn't received gracefully. Some fans who were attached to Eminem turned on Obi, viewing him as ungrateful and subconsciously picked a side. Without Eminem coming out and championing him and encouraging fans not to believe the rumors, Obi took a shot that he wouldn't recover from as a potential star. Leaving any popular artist is almost certainly a death sentence. Obi was nice, but he hadn't reached undeniable status as a full package of yet therefore couldn't compete. Some even think Trice took shots at Eminem in his song, The Giant, and I speculate Eminem felt away as well. Even though they patched things up, it was too late and Marshall wasn't in the space to be what he could have been for Obi. They want M to be involved all the time. Fall back, bro, I know you got shit on the table. You know, let me do this. That's why I put the album together myself, but they wouldn't open the budget. Stunt number three, the wave hit the shore. Trice began working with DJ Premier and other producers, but eventually started his own label, Black Market Entertainment, and didn't release his next album until 2012, six years after his second album, and four years after leaving Shady. By then, the music had completely changed, and that wave early 2000s rappers had completely hit the shore for all but a few heavyweights. Melody began entering the game, swag and being pretty was a thing, along with getting high becoming popular. Guys like Kanye West, Lil Wayne, and Drake were now running the game, while the boom bap rappers of earlier saw their wave completely fizzle out. He'd release two more albums in 2015 and 2019 before spending time in jail in 2020 for shooting his girlfriend's son. Nowadays, Obi Trice's name is usually followed by a who when talking to younger hip-hop fans and it's mainly because his wave had long passed over a decade ago. All in all, Obi Trice still today is one of my favorite artists to listen to. 
No, he doesn't have the backing he once had that had him on top of the game for a few months, but the value is still there in what he's saying. He never became a star when for sure had these things not happened, he could have been. Salute to Obi. I wish him nothing but the best. He's still making great music. Make sure you go and check him out on YouTube. Obi Trice is the name. Real name, no gimmicks. Yo, it's your boy JC Stunner Growth. I think we got out. it. That's a wrap. Obi, it was hot. I'm going to see you in Detroit next week. Do what I do like I was doing it when I'm screwing. Rap the chicks. My split plus the crew. Smack the f***, chase them. What would you do? Enough! Yeah. Enough! Obi Trice!